Hello. Okay. So the next session, the next slot, um, what I was hoping to do as part of the, the mini-conf is to actually have a session where we sit down and discuss stuff because last year we didn't have that kind of thing. We had build session and we had a couple of talks. The feedback was it would be really good if there was a, a panel or a discussion or something or other that we could actually ask questions that we're not sure about and, you know, and that's cool. So. Um, I'm not quite sure how we want to do this because I want it to be a discussion. I don't really want it to be a panel where, you know, a couple of people stand up here and, and answer the answer. I really want it to be as much you guys talking about stuff because um, the conversations that are going on, there's lots of cool stuff. And so, uh, you know, is it, are we interested in introducing ourselves and saying our project is something like this? Is that, maybe? Okay, cool. What I might do is I might um, get these guys to start rolling. Can you move the pan the camera around? All right, cool. Okay I'm gonna I'm gonna pass the mic around. I don't want this to be formal, right? I just want people to get in and, and ask each other questions and stuff. So I'll pass this on. So uh, repeat the question. Oh, so, so you can you can so talk, tell us what you're interested in, and if people ask you questions, repeat the question. All right. Well, I'm I'm probably the least experienced radio person in the room, so there you are. Um, so to a couple of things of interest. Um, early uh, late last year, pledged to the Things Network, so I'm hoping to have a, a Laura Ran uh, Gateway sometime in the next few months. So, so if anyone's interested in uh, Laura Laura Ran, um, uh, please contact me. Um, the other thing, uh, Bob and I, uh, over the last couple of years, have worked a lot on um, 802.15.4, 6 uh, low pan, so IPv6 over small mesh networks. That's another uh, area of interest. So that's kind of some of the stuff into, and also been doing a lot of IoT stuff and grappling with uh, Wi-Fi when you've got dozens, if not hundreds, of IoT devices. So it's sort of, I'm finding, this, um, it, whilst I'm a software guy, just radio is just creeping more and more into my, into my work as a, an area that you basically have to, have to understand and be knowledgeable about. Thanks, Andy. Uh, I'm Bob Powers. Um, you, yeah, similar sorts of interest to Andy. Uh, I have an electronics engineering background. Uh, I do have uh, a very new interest in, in SDR. I'd always kind of written it off as something that I would get into eventually, but now I've decided it's something I'd really like to do. Uh, I also do like test equipment, so I was pretty excited by the, the title of your talk, and I love how it devolved into, and now I'm characterizing diodes. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. And, uh, and yeah, having an electronics background, I completely appreciate that because that's, uh, that's where most of my life ends up now. It's uh, looking at things like that. Um, sorry, I've lost the plot. Well, that's, that's most of our interests and in things. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm also doing some work with a UAV company at the moment. Uh, it's mostly electronics integration work. But uh, we, we are looking at a lot of radio, comms, telemetry, uh, those sorts of things. All the topics we've had today uh, are definitely going to be central to a lot of things I'm you know, hopefully going to be paid to do in the next year or so. Um, so uh, yeah, if you have areas of interest there, uh, I'm more than happy to talk with you about all that. So that's me. Uh, I'm Carrie, and uh, I guess I've got a wide, very wide, varied interests. Uh, ham radio operator, so VK5 Charlie Delta, for any that uh, know what that means. Um, I guess the most interesting thing that I, I'm doing, it's been parked, unfortunately, but uh, it's taking one of Keith and Bedale's boards, an Altus Metrum, and turning it into a lap timer for putting in track days on cars, wanting to get very accurate position of a vehicle that's doing 200 kilometres an hour, where it is on the track, when it brakes, when it turns, all those sorts of things. Uh, so I'm interested in logging all the things um, so that I can use that uh, telemetry to then basically go faster. That's the end of the day. I race the clock, I'm not racing other cars. And uh, through data logging techniques, I've shaved about three or four seconds off of my lap times at uh, the local track. And I'm interested in getting more times off of those as well. So. Yeah, capturing information and uh, telemetry data to people on the side who are interested to see what's happening in the cars that are actually going past them. How do you know the car position? As in where it is, GPS, accurate GPS, yeah, ten, at least 10 hertz. 
Um, ideally up to 20 or 50 hertz would be better, uh, but can interpolate some of that obviously through accelerometer, gyroscope, and um, obviously having the best GPS you can get at a reasonable price. Uh, I had you pilot, yeah, that's not, yeah, not really. I mean, they're probably for logging and playing back, that might be useful, some of that stuff. Uh, but most of the other stuff is just um, your basic graphing and analysis, so GNU plot and stuff like that. So are you doing this on the fly, or this is something that you're coming back to? At the moment, it's, po at the moment it's post. Yeah. Um, ideally, my goal is it's real time. So in the vehicle, I have a heads-up display showing basically break points and whether I'm ahead or behind them, um, max speeds, lower speeds, through corners, all those sorts of things. I want to be able to do a comparison as you're going around the track so I can see am I actually improving as I'm driving in real time rather than wait till I get back to the, the pit, then you know do all the analysis and go, oh, look, that line was up higher or maybe next time I should try this. Uh, ideally, I'd like something telling me that in the car as I'm going around. Could it, could it be augmented reality? Can you get you get the ghost car of your last run? I'd, like I'd love I'd love the yeah the the Gran Turismo in real life. That's that would be the end game. But I'm not sure how the other cars would feel about me wearing an Oculus Rift while I'm doing 200 kilometres an hour uh, around a track. That's right. You'd be augmented. I'm uh, Scott, VK7LXX. Um, I um, use a bunch of uh, digital modes on um, HF on just with the sound card in my, um, to my Linux box. Um, but uh, I also have a um, couple of SDRs. Um, and so I'm slowly teaching myself GNU Radio by uh, essentially re-implementing some of those digital modes as Python blocks, even though they've already been done before. So. I um, find that's one way of uh, interesting using, using it. Uh, I recently got myself a, a Red Pitya uh, test equipment which, which uh, made me throw out my crow and signal generator and everything like that uh, because it was just a little FPGA and Linux board. Uh, and it was really, really useful. Uh, and then someone made it even more useful by actually making an SDR module for it. So um, it actually streams the IQ um, data over the network to um, an uh, application called H HP SDR um, and so there's clients for that for Android um, and Linux and Windows and everything like that so um, my test equipment is now another radio which is yeah really cool. <laughs> oh yes we did that a couple of years ago. We did uh, um, Mark and I, we uh, exchange memes over slow scan TV um, because one cannot simply send memes over slow scan TV. <laughs> I'm passing it this way. <laughs> it's not a random walk. I'm Keith Packard, uh, KD7 SQG. Um, I haven't done any much, much stuff in the radio other than uh, building little telemetry devices for rocketry, which is what I use all the radio stuff for, and GPS receivers. Uh, but we've been using the CC, the TI chipcon parts for a long time uh, on 433, 433 megahertz. Uh, the radio regulations in the US are such that trying to use anything other than amateur radio for personal uh, unlicensed hardware products is essentially impossible. So all of this cool ISM stuff, it's like, yes, we would love to do that, but we cannot. <laughs> So, but simple GFSK modulation schemes. Very interested in uh, in in building a custom receiver that could do a better job than the CC1200 does on receive. Uh, right now, the CC1200 uh, at 1200 baud is shockingly horrible. In fact, it is about as sensitive as APRS. So you know, you mock APRS for being 7 dB off of optimal, and yet my CC1200 radio is no better than that because the chip is so bad. So <laughs> it's very frustrating. 
Um, Andrew Trudel, uh, VK1FAAH. Um, so I play around with ISM band radios, writing firmware for telemetry radios um, based on the Pope RF and with frequency hopping, TDM, time division multiplexing. Uh, and then there's a new radio coming out from SI Labs that we might end up using. Um, but the stuff David was talking about was also looked very interesting. Uh, love to do that for telemetry. So this is mostly for autopilots for drones. Um, so we're typically run at sort of 57, 600. Um, but we'd like to do variable bit rate. So uh, we're thinking that modifying the TDM scheme a little bit so that um, with um, each time slice of the TDM, there'd be a small leader packet which would uh, be at a fixed board rate, uh, say 19200, and it would specify what the board rate of the remaining time slice is. And then that way the rest of the time slice could be at a higher board rate and then it would switch board rates. So each radio would keep a little table of the error rates it's getting for each frequency in the set of in the hopping table. Um, and then so it would learn, you know, what frequencies are able to sustain what board rates and then it would automatically, you know, drop down and bring up the board rates per channel so that you can get a lot more data through um, and you know, gracefully degrade as you get longer distance. So uh, none of this actually exists yet, but uh, you know, we hope. Um, we, the software we've got at the moment is on four different bands, but the, the vast majority of people use 433 and uh, 915. Um, you know, obviously we support both the US 900 to 928, the Australian 915, 928 plus, um, and then in 433 it's a much narrower band, but there's also the 868 and there's the four, what's the one in the, the site above the 433 that's used somewhere in Europe? Anyway, there's, there's four different models of this radio that different manufacturers make that ha support those four different bands. Um, but the software itself is fairly generic. So one of the main things we've got to do is uh, finally dump the damn 8051 because it's all based on this 8051 microcontroller, horrible, horrible thing. Um, and using SDCC, and so the newer microcontrollers have an ARM Cortex-M4 on them, which is going to be absolute bliss by comparison. We'll actually have, you know, debugging SWD and this sort of thing, lovely. Um, so we are going to be probably having a party to say goodbye 8051 because uh, we're, we're down to our last, I think we're down to four bytes of free memory at the moment. Um, oh, the 8051 should have died a very long time ago. 30 years ago. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so we've, we're probably one of the most complex 8051 programs around, I'd say, uh, with, at the moment. Hi, I'm Ian Cunningham, VK8FIPC from Alice Springs. I've come in here like a, an empty sponge and all the information sort of going, oh. So I can see the, the, the waterfalls and things like that. And yeah, my brain's sort of a bit full, but I think it's, um, I'm really fascinated with Linux and communications and all this telemetry stuff that's coming through. And I'm thinking, oh shit, where we are, maybe the balloons might come our way. So, um, yeah, it's really great and I'm really enjoying what's going on. Thanks very much. Hi, I'm Paul McHarris. I'm not doing any radio stuff at the moment, but I have a background in electronics engineering and digital signal processing and embedded systems, so this is all very fascinating. Uh, my name is Kasim Chaudhary and um, most of my previous work has been focused on the signal processing techniques for uh, software defined radio systems um, like simple timing synchronization, the framing carrier synchronization and decoding and all of these kinds of things. But I haven't touched the hardware yet and that's what I'm, I'm, I'm planning to do now and my purpose of coming here was to um, get in touch with people and listening to their talks so that I can get one foot into how to proceed in uh, that goal. So that's what I'm doing. Peter Chubb, uh, VK2 Foxtrot Papa Charlie, but I'm hardly ever on air because I spend too much time playing with my kids instead. 
Um, after the last LCA and the uh, build fest, I got fed up totally with the tiny, tiny, tiny parts. So my current project is trying to restore an old valve communications receiver. <laughs> where the parts are big enough to pick up with your hands and not have to use tweezers. Yeah, um, Jill, rolling VK2 DLY. I've been licensed for an awful long time and started in the days when, um, yeah, a boat anchor was probably the best way to describe the communications receivers. Um, and then most of my radio activities has been with analogue um, machines. So after a long hiatus in academia and industry as an electrical engineer, I um, got back into um, radio fairly recently. And I'm still going through my junk boxes finding stuff like, oh, that was a bit of test gear. I wonder what that was for. And, oh, now that could be useful. <laughs> And, yeah, I've got some really interesting things that I keep finding in the attic. So I'm gradually dusting them off and turning them on and they didn't blow up and that was nice. Um, so, yeah, I've found that this stream in the conference has been quite fascinating. Last year, oh, actually, no, at the Canberra conference was the first time I'd ever seen one of these waterfalls. It makes my eyes pop. Marvellous stuff. And personal interests in this field would include um, what the ionosphere is up to these days, what the sun's up to these days, and it's all different, but it's all the same, but it's all different again. <laughs> it's good. Uh, hi, I'm Harrison, and um, I'm really a beginner in this whole field. Um, I just finished high school last year, and as part of my project, I um, decided I want to send some sensors to an extreme environment. So I managed to get in contact with the Bureau of Meteorology and they allowed me to send some sensors to Antarctica. So as a part of that, I managed to get some cheap NRF sensors, which are just basically radio modules. Um, and I hooked that up to a uh, basic um, AT Mega running Arduino. And I managed to get some um, you know, climate data down there. And obviously, because of conditions and stuff, I um, had to be well insulated. and. Um, yeah, it was a really interesting project. It was my first steps into RF, and um, yeah, I'm still learning a lot here, and this has been really engaging. So yeah, definitely something I'm going to be interested in the future. Um, my name's Jim. I have no background in radio whatsoever other than marine radio. Um, and my first intro to this stuff was with one day's notice being drawn into a high school course to teach roughly 30 kids to build a weather balloon and somebody else's content, somebody else's kit and circuits and the whole work and I did to teach it and we had a mostly successful launch but with a lot of sad tales of fail which if anyone wants to hear later, I'm happy to talk about. Hi, I'm Mark. Um, so I think most of the stuff I've been doing with radio recently is because of some guy called Tridge who likes to put computers and flying stuff uh, and then it turned out that they have lots of radios in them uh, between RC, 2.4 gig, uh, video, 900 megahertz, 5 gig video. I mean, you have all those things working together uh, or not working together because they're stepping on one another, basically. And then uh, when you put a one watt transmitter next to a few electronic components, it turns out they talk to one another, not necessarily in ways that you had planned. Um, so I found myself, well, I guess I have to learn about radio a bit more because... Uh, Otherwise, I'm, my plane's not necessarily go, needs, uh, it's not necessarily going to go where I need it to go. Um, and I got a ham license and uh, learning a little bit from there. Probably do more work with telemetry later. Hi, I'm uh, Michael Borthwick, VK3 UBM, United Bravo Mexico, if we're on HF and QRP. Um, before I was licensed, I did some work uh, in the ISM band transmitting video and audio from model rockets to the ground using... Uh, 10 milliwatts at 2.4 gig, and you can find those videos online if you Google Aussie Rocket Cam. Um, it was quite a successful project. And uh, most recently, uh, in, in the VHF UHF field day, I was up on Mount Anarchy, which is about 20 kilometres outside Geelong, and I was using an Arduino-based transverter controller so that rather than have four separate 
intermediate frequency rigs for all the bands from 6 metres to 2.4 gig. I had one radio and I was able to switch between the antennas and uh, have an agile frequency system that could remember the last band that I was on. So if you Google microwave hilltopping, you'll uh, find that 23-minute uh, video of that adventure on top of Mount Anarchy. Thanks. Uh, my name's Mike O'Connor. I have uh, very little to do with uh, anything other 2.4 and 5 gig uh, Wi-Fi. <laughs> um, did a bit of uh, stuff with um, ESP8266 for uh, uh, MQTT, but that's about it. <laughs> so it's pretty much spot on afternoon tea time. So um, we're going to come back after the break and we can get on and do some fox hunting and, you know, any other stuff that we want to do. Um, some folks have headed out to do a soda activation and they'll be using um, Codec 2. So with a bit of luck, we're going to try and get a HF station set up here and have a contact with them. So um, stick around for that after the break. Yeah, so the break, we'll come back at 3.40. Okay. <laughs> 